Welcome to Heal Your Life Tuesdays with myself, Antoinette Nirvana. Every Tuesday, one of the lovely Heal Your Life coaches will be offering an interview article or inspirational words of wisdom on different topics. Watch the Body and Mind social media every Tuesday. This is a collaboration with Tracy French from Body and Mind and Nashika Singh from Live Love Coaching Training Academy. And today we'll be chatting to one of the key coaches, Shariksha Nyker, and her article is about loving yourself through grief. You know, we get moved on the checkerboard of life and you go, wow, there you are. And why I'm saying that, uh, Sharik Shan, and welcome to today, is my sister just lost her husband less than a month ago. This is a great topic that I could maybe help her in also learning how to love herself through this period. Well, it's really sad that she lost her husband. Antoinette, if I can speak exactly from my experiences, because this is what has brought me into the Healy Life family. This is what has brought my understanding of who I am, how I operate, using my mind, using my thoughts, using my emotions. Because I was in a place, so as a professional, I'm a mechanical engineer and I'm in the education industry. With all of that happening, my husband being diagnosed with osteosarcoma and going through the whole journey with him and then obviously him passing on was quite daunting, if not to say the least. And I hadn't known much of Heal Your Life or Louise Hay or any of that. And it was only after he had passed. And we know that we go through stages in grief. First, it's the sadness, it's the shock, it's having to deal with everyday activities without this person that has played such a vital role in our life. And then it turns into anger and it turns into a whole lot of other emotions that we don't even know is there, which is actually impacting our health and a whole lot of other areas as well. Like any other any other person in grief, I was going through the same motions of the questions of why and what could I have done differently? And then we go into self-blame and then it just keep spiraling over and over and over until personally for me, I had just reached a dead end and that was it for me. And I had just decided, you know what, this is it. I, I cannot do this any longer. And it was exactly at that point, to speak about divine timing, that I was introduced to the Louise Hay work and I was invited for a Heal Your Life Two Day Transformational Workshop. Being very scientific and all of these things, I was a bit skeptical of really, like what, is this really going to help me? However, I went into that workshop and Antoinette, I can tell you that that was the start of the rest of my life. Yeah, I can imagine. And what are the things that you did that loved yourself? So firstly, it starts with the awareness of us understanding that we are human beings. We have emotions. We have a body that works on such an intricate level of where everything is so interwoven so magnificently that we do not understand the magnificence of, of what we are actually doing. And for me, during that two-day workshop, that was the biggest aha moment was when I could understand that I had control over my emotions. I did even though at that point I wasn't aware of that. So in the workshop, we teach, firstly, awareness. Are we really aware of our thoughts? Our thoughts go into emotions. Step one is being aware. How am I feeling? I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling lonely, whatever that might be. Using the different tools and techniques in the workshops at which we teach, it helps us to bring it back home, back home to ourselves. And for me, that really helped me because it it just allowed me to focus on me, which many of us going through life never really get a chance to do. And I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about with life as we have it. When you're bringing it back to you, is there specific things, something like run a bath for yourself or take yourself on a date? Oh, definitely. So each one of us are different. So our preferences would be different. So for me, what really helped me was in the mornings, I used to take time out and go for a run to the beach. And that used to be my time of where I could evaluate myself, where I could get in touch with myself and really understand because remember through this grief process there's a lot of emotions going on that get stored in our bodies so physically i was experiencing ailments of of various things that i had never experienced before which had only started showing up in my body after the passing of my husband as i was learning louise hayes work and we know that she is phenomenal with the whole mind body link and as i started to research this more and practice it more really cultivated into my everyday lifestyle i could physically mentally and emotionally see progress in all areas of my life. So examples are like things like taking time out. I was lucky enough that I could go for a run to the beach every morning. So if I was angry, whatever anger is built up in this body is going to be released. And after that run, you feel so much lighter. Meditation helps a lot. Just even if it's just sitting quietly or even just listening to a song that you really like. Meditation is simply understanding how our mind works 
getting our mind to a point of stillness where we can say that we really don't have any thoughts and we're just on a focus point, one focus point where we don't have a monkey mind, as we call it. Yeah, I was so, having a conversation yesterday, Shariksa, with somebody and I was saying, you know, meditating could be making your bed or washing your dishes. And that is the kind of thing where you actually, meditation is being present right now with what you are doing and being with it and not with resentment or going, oh, hey, washing these dishes or do I have to make the bed again but really being in a loving space being in that present moment and as you say not have the monkey mind yes which is quite challenging at first for all of us however with practice with practice and one other very important thing that I found that worked for me is that you have to be committed to yourself to this journey because it's very easy to hit the wayward path of turning to and I deal a lot with youth and it's really my passion I'm a lot I do a lot of work in the education industry and we're trying to incorporate how Louise Hay's philosophy can be used to share with the youth at universities at high schools and all of these places and going into industries and you know when they're going to start their lives because they don't have these basic tools of understanding themselves first and they go into the workplace and they have all of these challenges so it really helps us to to bring it back to ourselves the question that i am sitting with at the moment is my sister's a reborn christian and of course anything that i bring to her is Correct. completely so dismissed very gentle. I have to come in in a very gentle way, you know, and to bring in words that I know that she could relate to. That's very universal as such. I've had many clients, especially with, like when someone's dealing with grief, the last thing they want to hear is, oh, they're in a better place. Let's call this 101 of what not to say to people who are grieving, okay? Oh, at least they're not in pain. Oh, they were the angels now. Yes, that's all well and good, but they're still not here with me. This is this is the thoughts and the emotions of someone that's grieving. And you know, it's, it's really real. And you have to understand that from that person's perspective, unless we ourselves have been in that situation, it is very difficult for someone from the outside to say, oh, I know how you feel. Because the first thing we're going to tell them is, no, you don't know how I feel. You know, And you can feel the empathy of someone who's who's really been through that road. Because our connection is... It's real. It's genuine. It's not, I'm not just putting some plaster to make you feel better because that's not going to help us because I put many plasters on my grief and I hid it. And I went back into life thinking that everything is hunky-dory. It was at these small points, small triggering points that I used to just snap and I used to have to stop and think, but this is really not my personality. You know, why am I behaving in this way? It's because I didn't really deal with the grief that was in right there in front of me. So I really had to sit with myself. Um, I used to do things like journaling, set a time a week, an hour a week. And that's how most of my writing comes about, actually, is from my journaling. It's not like I sit and I say, okay, fine, I'm going to write an article today. It doesn't happen that way for me. From my journaling, or if I see something, or if I read something, or if I hear a song, which reminds me of a special time with that loved one, whatever it might be, I really sit with that. I go into that grief. I cry if I have to. I allow my heart to hurt for that duration if I have to because what that does is our mind we're giving our mind an opportunity because what happens is that with this grief the more we lock it up it just gets stored in one corner and it's but it's still there you think hi you forgot about me and it pops up in the most random of places where we can't really understand why am I behaving in this way so when we give it an opportunity to express itself it alleviates that level of at the moment, my sister's really throwing herself into her work. She's working seven days a week. That's the grief pattern. We're going to hide when we end up at the psychiatrist's office. And I know, office. I know. I have deep respect for the medical science fraternity. However, with my personal experience with medical science in the past couple of years, I have made a personal decision to stick to holistic healing in whichever area it might be for myself or for my loved ones. And that's the kind of thing I was trying to say to my sister the other day. And not in so many many words but just that's exactly where I was going with the other point of with the work work that we do with the youth the biggest challenges are drug abuse alcohol abuse substance abuse all of these things and it's really not because they're bad people think about your sister she's grieving she's lost someone really 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 special to her and we will reach for anything that will make us feel better for that present moment because in that present moment nothing is as painful as the pain that we are feeling of that loss that is how we find if you go to rehabilitation centers and if you really get in there and if you understand the where these substance abusers are coming from, they're coming from the space of wanting to hide, of not wanting to even accept what is real at the moment, or most of the time, as just looking for an escape. And I've looked for an escape for a very long time until I really had to face my demons and say, hey, you know what? This is life. I'm here now. 
I'm going to be here. I might as well do it the best that I can. However, Antoinette, it's taken me, I mean, this year at the end of May will be four years since my husband passed. And I can tell you that it's a never ending journey. It never ends. And, you know, and it's like layers of an onion. You know, once you think, okay, fine, I've dealt with this, you know, you think that, okay, fine, now I can look at our, our pictures and not burst out crying or uh, I can hear a song and not, you know, go into a whole chills for a whole 30 minutes. So it's it's taking baby steps, but it's also being very, very, very mindful of what action steps we take while we are in that space. So that is where a very, very, very support network, very supportive network is required within an area of where someone is grieving. And you are in the perfect place, Antoinette, to support your sister through this. Exactly. And luckily, she also have the church and her church community and her Christian yeah. community as well, where she can go on a Sunday to church and get her spiritual fuel in the way that it works for her. And I think that is very powerful. Is there anything else that you would like to share just to wrap up, please? Understanding grief as I do now, and I know I still have a lot to learn, it's really to be real, you know, just, just be real with yourself, be honest with yourself and reach out. As much as during that time, we really feel as if we are really alone. However, there is help out there. There they are people who've been through what we've been through. There are people who have turned it around for the better. You know, as much as we are grieving the loss of a loved one, we aren't here on this earth to exist forever, any of us. Sometimes our timing is just a bit off, if you want to call it that. I would say that it starts with us. I had to learn to love myself first understand how much I loved my husband after that even though in my head it was the other way around and once I got that appreciation for myself once I looked in the mirror and I saw wow you know you're really strong you're really brave you're really pushing forward on this and everything around me started to change for the better because I really believed in myself where can we get hold of you if you could please give us your contact details? Sure, Antoinette. I have a Facebook page. It's called Light Engineering Life, as well as you can contact me on my cell phone, which is 061-549-2452, as well as on email, which is sariksha, S-A-R-I-K-S-H-A, at healyourlife.co.za. Fantastic. Thank you. And don't forget to visit the Heal Your Life South Africa page on Body and Mind, which is www.bodyandmind.co.za. And you can also find that in our Body and Mind Health Directory app available in Android as well as your Apple Play Store. You can download all our interviews and find all our Heal Your Life practitioners and coaches on there, as well as please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get notification of our next beautiful interview with one of the heal your life coaches and then you could share that with people that you think can gain benefit from these wonderful discussions this has been an interview with one of the heal your life south africa key coaches that has completed over 300 core skills in the craft of life coaching with live love academy the heal your life south africa is a global community that have been trained extensively and licensed by hay house to teach coach guide and support people to transform their lives no matter their circumstances heal your life tuesdays is celebrating this legacy of louise hay who believed that love is the most powerful healing force there is and it begins with you we invite you to be part of this love yourself heal your life community we thank you and bless you for all you are and all you do oh, thank you so much Antoinette. Thank you very, very much for sharing this very, very important topic. Birth and death, these are inevitable things and especially death is one of the things that is for eons a very difficult thing for us to handle. Thank you so much, Antoinette. It's been a pleasure being here and chatting with you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.